Red Dead Redemption 2 is proving to be a game with a ton of mysteries and easter eggs. I have to say, what we're about to go over is jam-packed with hidden content that you may or may not come upon in your travels. Anyway, I want to start off by saying thank you all for the support on the first episode, and I am indeed making this into a series as there's just so many secrets still to be uncovered right now. But if you do want to see more episodes, make sure to hit that like button if you do enjoy, and consider subscribing for a lot more Red Dead Redemption 2 content to come. Nonetheless, let's start with another UFO alien flying saucer ship being discovered. So in the last video, we discussed walking into a shack that is located north of Emerald Ranch and Emerald Station and finding tons of dead bodies and a letter left behind which was titled Mysterious Sermon. This letter said, At the second hour, under the half moon, by the great love and grace of our savior, Ku Kawaba, voyager of time and galaxies, we cast off of our corporal shells so his vessel can take our spirits to the promised realm to live in peace and power until the 2000th year when we will return for the new chosen and worship once again at the peak of Mount Shan. In his love we rejoice always. Now after you actually read this letter in game and come back and walk into this shack at 2am, a UFO will appear with its green lights glowing into the shack. Now the reason why I wanted to mention the letter again is because it makes a mention to the peak of Mount Shan. And interestingly, if you head to that location which can be found in West Elizabeth, another UFO will appear. Though it doesn't appear at the same time as the one in the shack. You have to stand on the peak of Mount Shan a little after midnight and it only hovers around for just a little bit of time before flying away. Now this whole easter egg many have said it's actually a reference to Heaven's Gate, which was an American UFO religious cult that consisted of about 40 members. In 1997 the entire cult killed themselves in order to reach what they believed was an extraterrestrial spacecraft following Comet Hale Bop. Now, right before they killed themselves, they left behind a message on their website which stated they were all finally ready to leave Earth as they had graduated from the human evolutionary level. But anyway, this seems to be what this easter egg is inspired by, but I still personally hope this leads to an Aliens vs Cowboys single player DLC. Next, in 2006, Rockstar Games released a very underrated game called Bully, or Canis Canum Edit, depending on where you live, thank you Jack Thompson for that one, but in Red Dead Redemption 2, we actually have a very neat reference to that game. So this easter egg begins with a side quest called The Noblest of Men and a Woman that you acquire in Valentine. Specifically it starts with you entering the Eastern Saloon of Valentine and talking to a man sitting at the bar. This quest takes you to various locations around Red Dead Redemption 2's world and cannot be fully completed till sometime in the fourth chapter of the story, but once you wrap up this quest you get a unique revolver which if you choose to examine the revolver engraved on the gun is Canis Canum Edit. One can only hope this is Rockstar's way of teasing more for this franchise in the future, but at the very least it's a cool nod to the game. So if you head north of Grizzlies East, you'll uncover a mystery involving witches. Specifically on the map, in the letters of Amberino, go to a small shack right above the N, and once you finally arrive you'll walk into the site which looks like someone was recently residing and littered around their skeletons of various animals as well as a bunch of other valuables like like snake oil and a hair tonic, but interestingly, there's a crow that just sits there and watches what you do. Eventually though, the last thing for you to do is to drink the mysterious liquid that's in the cauldron, and weirdly you'll pass out and wake up moved away from the site. Nothing changes in terms of your health or inventory or anything, you just simply pass out. Very strange, honestly. And speaking of strange, we have next is a mutant creature which is just it, it's something. You first need to head just outside of the Van Horn trading post, make your way to an old abandoned house. Now the only way to get into this house is by entering into a window on the second story. To do that you jump on a wagon and then the boxes that are on the wagon, and then onto the roof where you can enter through the window. Once you get inside, you'll find a very weird science experiment that appears to have gone wrong. Arthur will make a note of it in his journal, but if you wander around a little bit, investigate in the room, you'll find notes which offer further details about the monstrosity someone tried creating. It looks like someone tried putting a boar, a bear, a human, a vulture, and other animals together to make the ultimate monster of sorts, I guess? Yeah, just um little horrifying, but also located near Van Horn is a unique mask. This again is just west of the town, and more specifically, it's close to the letter R of New Hanover on the map. 
Once you arrive to this location, all you have to do is walk to the butcher's area. You'll see a bunch of dead animals hanging around, and hanging on one of the posts is a pig mask. In this dark scene, you can't really see how the mask actually looks, but I took another shot later with it on, and I actually found it interesting that some NPCs reacted with disgust towards the mask. Now, if you head a little south of the map into the bayou region right besides the Lakay marker, you'll find another unique mask. All you need to do is enter into a broken down shack and get into the second room. Once you're into that room, jump onto the platform in front of you, in which the cat skull will be right in front of you for you to take. Again, just another mask that will probably frighten some folks, but there is another one that likely falls into that same category. All the way in West Elizabeth, west of Mount Shan, you'll find a very strange pagan ritual site that Arthur will again take note of in his journal, and once that's down, you can actually interact with the corpse that's at the center and take the pagan mask, which I will say is probably the best of these masks in my opinion. Rockstar Games really spent a lot of time putting historical items from various eras of history into the game. Some a little bit more horrifying than others, but nonetheless, I really like this world being filled with so many mysteries and hidden content. But in my last video, we found a broken pirate sword, and we have since found a hat to go along with it. This time you need to head west of Rhodes and make your way to the bigger island. This location is also close to one of the camps that Dutch's gang stays near for some time, but to reach this island, you will need to either be very careful swimming and maneuvering around if that's possible, or just take a boat. And once you arrive, you'll make your way to a broken down ship. Inside, you'll find a lockbox that has some aged pirate rum, and a little further ahead, Hiding behind some debris, you'll find a tricorn hat that actually is in pretty much perfect condition and it looks great. So if you have been watching these videos, we now have a pirate hat and weapon, a viking hat and weapon, and next we have is a civil war hat and weapon. To get these items, you'll have to head just a bit southwest of the Van Horn trading post and make your way to an abandoned civil war fort. When you reach the fort first, you need to stand there and admire the site because I mean it actually looks very cool. But next you'll need to enter the building that is inside the fort and lying on a crate is one of the collectible cigarette cards that you can obtain but you need to head down to the basement next where there's a few unique things that you'll find. The big chest holds a few valuable items like a gold nugget but also a letter that gives you understanding to what happened to this destroyed and abandoned fort. The letter titled Civil War Report says, May 8, 1863, Confederate soldiers under General Quincy Harris attacked Fort Bernand at night, climbed trees to fire down into the fort, then battered and broke through the north gate, all survivors being executed and bodies burned. I am next, First Lieutenant Ronald Alger. So pretty much this was a Union base that was destroyed by Confederate soldiers, and based on some of the battlefields that we can ride through, it's clear that much of the Civil War still lives on in certain parts, with old relics still lying around, as well as some veterans that you can meet and interact with all around the game world. But in this basement, on a crate, you'll find a unique weapon, this being a Civil War knife, and the official description on the compendium says, an old bowie knife with a solid blade, worn wooden handle, and large D-shaped handguard for protection. This weapon was commonly used by Civil War soldiers and is covered in rust. It was found in a storage room underneath the ruined Fort Bernand in Roanoke Ridge, New Hanover. The weapon, I will say, doesn't look very effective, but it's another cool relic to find. Other than the knife, what also can be found in the corner of the basement is a Civil War hardy hat, which is now my personal favorite new hat. It just looks really nice and goes with a custom outfit I personally have made. Now, if you're close to Valentine, make sure to find your way to the burned down town of Limpany. It's just south of Horseshoe Overlook. Pretty much this town is ruined, everything is gone or destroyed, but you will find two valuable items in the sheriff's office. Under a desk, there's a lockbox which can be opened, and what's inside is a gold gold bar, and a special horse stimulant pamphlet. If you're just starting Red Dead Redemption 2, this is probably one of the easiest ways for some quick bucks, as gold bars can be sold defenses for $500, which no matter what comes in handy for really anyone hunting for cash. Now thank you to Twitter user IIRex Germany for this next easter egg, but it's a very unique conversation between John Marston and Javier Escuela. I can't go back. Maybe one day. I'd love to go to Mexico. One day. <laughs> Maybe you will. If you played Red Dead Redemption, you probably understand the significance of this moment as, spoiler warning, for Red Dead Redemption, 
John Marston heads to Mexico to capture or kill Javier Escuela, which this moment seems to be Rockstar's nod or foreshadowing to the events that will transpire just about 12 years later in Nuevo Paraiso. But the last easter egg we're going to talk about today is a mammoth. This can be found all the way north of the map in Amberino, close to Dead Boot Creek lies the remains of a mammoth which Arthur will need to inspect and add to his journal. So far we've found what appeared to be bones belonging to a Bigfoot, now a mammoth, and there's also dinosaur bones linked to a side quest. Red Dead Redemption 2 certainly is filled with a ton of history. But anyway, again, there's still a ton of mysteries, secrets, myths, easter eggs, and rare items still to be discovered and discussed. Let me know down in the comment section below if you've discovered anything unique that has not been discussed yet, but thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video, and maybe if you want to see more, or also if you found any informative value, and consider subscribing for much more Red Dead Redemption 2 content to come, as I'm one of your best sources on this game, and remember, Outlaws for Life.